done a lot of interviews before or no? No, this is like my first, my first proper like. That's so. No, that's maybe my second. Like I've done another one, but like it was like a smaller one, like a shorter like. It was like an article or was it like a something recorded like this? Um, something recorded like this, but with like a couple questions. Oh, okay. Like, sorry. Yeah, questions. Type, yeah. So what do you what have you got going on lately? Like. What have you been up to? See, like, I seen you just came from, you're doing something outside. Where are you yeah, up to? Um, I went out with some friends like, towards my birthday. So we just, oh, okay. Happy yeah, birthday. Thank like you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, we just went outside to just, you know, chill, do something pleasant for, for a bit. Like, we went to the leaf. So, okay. yeah, that was cool. We're trying to see butterflies, but we just sort of left the one. It was kind of lame. But, like, the butterflies aren't really thriving right now, No, eh? they're not. <laughs> oh, they're not. It's too hot for everybody, I guess. Yeah. Like, it was pretty. Took some pretty pictures, like, listen to music and shit. Go food. That's a good time. Yeah, man. Good time. Good time. Yeah. It's a chill time. With family and shit. Yeah. It's chill. I got lots of questions for you. Yeah. I want to. I want to know all about you. I want to know your story. I want to know where you came from. All that yeah. shit. Okay. So, um, so how did we get to this point? Like, how did you start? Like, how did you grow up? Where are you from? Okay, let's see. Um, I was born in Nigeria, Port Harcourt. Yeah, Port Harcourt, CC. What is the name of this teacher? I don't remember. What is definitely teacher? What is yeah. But like, yeah, I was born in PA City and I don't know, I feel like PA City is very much like Winnipeg. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, very grimy. Mm. Yeah. yeah, very grimy, very like, you see everything happening on the streets, but like, everything happens outside. Right. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know, growing up PA is like, I don't know, it just made me have a taste for like, game you know like mm -hmm. that, learn it learn yeah. how to maneuver and just about and to move and shit like just crossing the road in ph was different <laughs> you can never cross the road normal because there is no there's no like sidewalks and shit yeah so yeah, like yeah. you have to hit cars and shit so, like, <laughs> it was just a different vibe very exciting like the city wasn't very fast paced but like you could still get easily caught up and yeah, everything sure. so it was cool and then i moved to abuja for like high school nice. and shit and then that was cool. I was mostly inside most of the time because like Abuja is a more like calmer, like cleaner city. Mm -hmm. So like I was just mostly inside, not doing too much. Which place you like more? Fatakot. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It's like I like Abuja too. Like it's very chill. Yeah. But like for the kind of lifestyle I prefer to live, Fatakot mm -hmm. for sure. That's pH. True. It's just like bole and fish. The roasted, the, yeah, the yeah. road food, bro. <laughs> but game, like, nothing beats that, eh? Nothing. No. Nowhere in the world, bully and a fish <laughs> like put up called nowhere. Nowhere. So it's things like that that make you feel like okay. That's why it's home, right? Yeah, it's home. That's home. That's where that's where like everything comes from. Like inspiration wise, like definitely PH yeah. season. Right? So where did you go from how how'd you end up in Canada? So, um crazy. So we moved to Abuja, then I moved back to PH and then this was like in high school, like eleventh grade. My dad called me, you know, my mom called me, I was in school, my mom was like, just try your best, do well in school, um, yeah, things are going on, like, what are you talking about, type shit, yeah, and then, I was like, oh, we're going to go to Canada, I was like, Drake is in Toronto, right? <laughs> that's, and, that's all you knew, eh? Yeah, that's yeah. all I knew about Canada, I'm like, Drake, Toronto, let's make it happen, mm -hmm. boom, so like, I went to High school in Hamilton, like CIC. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, man, a lot of crazy rich days. Yeah. I feel like that definitely inspired, like, my style or, like, yeah, on also my approach to music and everything, like, mm. moving to doing high school in CIC and everything. Everyone was cool and everything. It was just, it was just a very cool space. Yeah. And then not having parents around, not having anyone, just, like, you and your guys type B. So, like, that's also where I started recording. So it used to be me, Ellie Kem, I used to call him Assad, and fucking cheese him. I used to call him DJ Khaled and Christian, bro. After school, every day we used to go to the studio. Because yeah. there used to be a, a studio in Hamilton Library that was like free. All you had to do was sign up, get a library card and shit. So after school, every day we just go there and record. Every day we used to go there and record. So that's how. Do you, do you think because you were like, you were alone at that time? Like, just you and your friends, yeah, you had the, the opportunity. Yeah, I had the opportunity to do all of that. Because like, my parents were really not fucking with that. Mm -hmm. Like, they were all the time, they were calling, it's like, yo. I hate you, you, you left to go to, you need to stop, you need to focus on your studio. I'm like, bro, yeah. you don't even know what's going on. <laughs> nah, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't know the vision. They didn't, they didn't see the vision, they didn't no. see the vision, no. Like, it was definitely a vibe. Like, we would literally write the songs during break time, during class, and then we to the studio. Yeah. Like, shout out K3, it was K3 that put me onto the studio. Like, and that's crazy because, like, K3 went to the same 
primary school in Port Harcourt. Yeah, but it was like oh, really? my senior year. That's crazy. That's crazy as hell. I feel like I was crazy as hell. Like, <laughs> same primary school, and then we were a few too. I just ran into him, like he went to CIC too. Like, very yeah. crazy coincidence. Then we started talking, he was recording too, told me about the studio and everything. So I was like, that's when I really so, started recording. So when did you notice you were like, damn, like, I might have something here. When when did you start kind of getting your foot in? So, I will love this song, um, Pink. I'm Rockstar. Yeah. Na, 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 na. yeah, yeah. Yo, I was obsessed with that song <laughs> so much. I don't know why. That's a banger. It was a banger. Yeah. Like, that song made me want to learn how to play guitar. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's how it started. So, like, I'll, I'll take cardboard and, like, make a, and rubber bands and make a fake guitar. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, my family friend had a guitar and then I just took it. I just took it and took it home. You just and learned I, how yeah, to play. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't learn how to play. I was just using to make noise. Yeah. <laughs> and then they made me give it back. But like, I was basically just very obsessed with learning how to play the guitar for a while. Oh, wow. And then when I went to high school in Abuja, they had like guitars, they had people who could teach and everything. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was in the studio just playing the one chord I knew. I could just play C. I was yeah. just playing that shit. And then um, someone saw me like, what was the name of them? Um, money, I think. I cannot remember. Oh my god, it's been so long. But he saw me and he was like, he was just a staff. And he was like, you, you want to learn how to play for real? I was like, yes, yes, yes show me. Yeah. Then he started showing me chords, that showed me progressions and everything. And then I just started playing the guitar, playing the guitar, and then I started writing songs. And then I was like, yeah, I could probably do this forever. <laughs> like, so what kind of genre did you start out with? Like I feel like I started with like pop, like Justin Bieber type shit. Yeah, yeah. Because I used to really like Justin Bieber too. Mm -hmm. At that time, like Justin Bieber, Jonas Brothers, Austin and Ali, Camp Rock. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny guys, how they, in, that, like, those guys influenced Those guys, at the end of the day, yeah. they actually put a lot of us on. Because, like, we grew up watching Disney and shit. Yeah. So, yeah, so I started making very cute, like, poppy yeah. tunes at first. And then I started listening to Lil Wayne. So mm -hmm. like shout out my house out guys for that. Like Abuja yeah. just really liked hip hop, like mm -hmm. Luwin, Recross, all of them. So like that not changed my sound. Because yeah. like I was like, hmm, this <laughs> this kind of fits me a little a little you. better and everything. Yeah. So but like obviously you can't you can't play guitar to recross per se. So yeah. that that made me want to go into producing eventually. So you have to learn how to make the music Beats. that fits your your steam and shit. For sure. Yeah, that's basically how it started. Guitar, then writing music on my ones, then writing music with friends. Yeah. Then I moved to PH and writing more music and then started recording the kind of. So, if I'm not mistaken, Thoughts was one of your like, she, more she, like breakout uh, yeah, singles. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. How did you kind of like conceptualize that and like how did so, that, like when did you kind of realize like, okay, like this might be the one that kind of gets stuff that going here? Real, like, bro, that is real, that's a real question, like bro. So, Thoughts is like an OG song, like, damn. So, like, I, I had written many songs in like, let's say, 11th grade before I came to Canada. Yeah. And then I wanted to record those songs, but like, I couldn't figure out the production and everything. Yeah. So, we just got new beats and then we were recording, recording a bunch of songs. But then, Thoughts was the one that like, everybody on the team, back then like Christian, um, Chizim, what's his name, um, Assad, Ellie Kim, everyone was like, okay, this is the one, this is the one, I feel this one. And it was a longer song too, but like, yeah, I feel like at that point, too, I was also kind of depressed, like, I was mad depressed, like, you mm -hmm. know, leaving friends back home and everything, so like. That's a big transition. Yeah, yeah, it was a big transition, so like, there was a lot of venting going on on the song, I was like, yelling a lot, it's very yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was, at that point in time for me, it was like one of the craziest things I had ever done. And I did a little guitar solo at the end. Just yeah. to like, you know, I was still on my rock, sh rock sh shit back then. But yeah, so it was like, I don't know, it was one of the most complete things we had done. Mm -hmm. Going to the studio every time, recording, recording, recording. That was one thing that was like, oh, this is mad. Let's show everybody type right. shit. So yeah, we just put it out. We were showing everybody. So Chime put out music around the same time I put out music. And then we had um, a mutual friend, Easy. So same thing for Taco guys, bro. Easy yeah. was like, yo, 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 your song is hard. Check out this guy, Chan. Was like, yo, his song is hard too. And so when I ended up moving to Ottawa, yeah, 
we ended up in the same building too, so it was the craziest <laughs> coincidence. I'm like, bro, how are we in the same building? You're dropping songs. The same it's funny how guys just coming, to, you're just lining up with people. Lining right? up with people yeah. like crazy. So yeah. like, yeah, so me and Chan ended up like, bro, that's my buddy from, from time. Like, yeah. So with thoughts, yeah, it was like that. It was a lot of synergy. Mm. Yeah, that's the right word. Like, it was just a lot of synergy, a lot of things just lining up and then we're like, this is the moment. Let's just put something out. Let's let's make it happen. That's cool. So, so yeah. did you kind of keep that momentum going? Like I know you went to Carlton. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So did, do you think like do you think things kind of like kept moving as you kind of started university, or do you think like it kind of slowed down? We did a bit of both. Yeah. So like after thoughts, we did like an EP, and then that was kind of cool because like everyone in my high school was bumping in kind of thing like. People were bumped like local friends, with yep. my family, but were kind of bumping in, performed that prom type shit. So like, we did the EP and then it was cool and then everyone was kind of like, yeah, we're gonna, gonna blow, we're gonna <laughs> get, everyone thinks yeah, we're gonna we're blow. Here. Yeah, we're out of here. Yeah, we're out of here, we made it, we're out of the hood, everything, yeah. <laughs> you know. But then, life, mm -hmm. you know, like it didn't blow, so we just keep dropping. So we just kept on working on that shit, then I met Chime. I met Banks, I met Bellamar, I met all these guys in Carlton and then for some reason we just end up in the same building. So yeah, so that's how we now basically formed 1207, but it was not like we formed it. That was just the room number, 1207. Mm -hmm. So like, that's where we used to record it, that's where we used to chill right. and everything. So like, I feel like at that point was when we actually started working on the music, like bro, like my dad should not watch this, but like bro, I used to skip school, like I'm not going to skip this. <laughs> You know, Don't send this to him. He's like, gonna, it's gonna be on your ass. For weeks, bro, we we'll just be in the studio, learning how to produce, watching videos, learning how to record, recording, mixing, mixing, mixing. Yeah. That's all we we'll do. Like, bro, how many, how many tests did I miss just because of songs, just recording songs and everything. So that was the time that we really started working on the music and everything. But everything was obviously experimental and everything. So that's when it kind of took a dip. Because we're trying to we're trying to balance school and everything, but we're actually trying to learn how to make music the right way and everything. But I feel like that was like the the heart of the like the whole experience. Because like it's never been like that again, bro. It was so many creative minds locked in in the same place. Like everyone was like there were three studios in the same house. Everyone was always working on something something had to be going on at some point. Like, someone could be writing a song in this room, then go to the next room to record, then it's mixing in the other room, and then it's just an infinite loop of, like, yeah. music and that's, shit. That's such, like, a hive mind yeah. kind of situation. Much, You're yeah. pretty lucky, you know, to be in, like, a situation like, like that. Like, now I know. Like, at that point, you don't notice how lucky you are, because mm -hmm. it's just happening, and you're just enjoying yourself and everything. But, like, yeah. So you kind of feel like that time kind of defined, like, how you make music moving forward. Yes, yeah. definitely. Because, like, before I used to be in my head about music a lot, very much in my head, in my head, in my head. That made music more real. Mm. I don't know. You, you yeah. could feel it almost. Yeah, at you that could point. feel it. Like, it's very, very tangible. Like, you know, you don't think about it too much. And, like, what you think is not also, like, what sounds the best. You start going off, like, the feeling more of improvising sure. more and all that, like it was mad. Because like, we started making rules like, you have to write the verse on the spot. Then <laughs> you have to record one take, all this kind of thing. You can't rewrite your verse. Things like that make you okay. It's like a writing camp. Yeah, like a writing camp for real. You have to bring your A game. Yeah. Like, niggas used to be scared to rap with bangs. But you're rapping with bangs now. Yeah. You know you know you have to. Oh, exactly. You have to bring your A game. Everybody knows that you have to bring your A game. Especially when it's your boys, too. Like, they're going to be on your ass. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody's going to be bringing their shit. So you know you have to come hard and everything. So at first, like, nerves and everything. But I feel like that's... Because I'm very, very anxious. Like, social anxiety and everything. For sure. So, like, so I feel like that helped me work on my nerves a lot. Because, like... I'm not a big fan of performing, like people know, like, yeah. I'm trying to work on it now, like, cause you have to perform and shit, but like, yeah. making music around people was like difficult. I always like to be private and shit, but that broke me out of my shell. They made me like, what, what do you mean you wanna hide? Like, bro, speak, speak, let's know you can rap. So you definitely so, like, that's definitely an emergence for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely, most definitely an emergence, yeah. As you 
go through Carlton, when do you decide that Winnipeg is your next destination? I didn't, I didn't definitely didn't make that decision. <laughs> you were le reluctant yeah. Winnipeg. <laughs> that was not my decision. That was my dad. <laughs> oh, so, really? Yeah. So this is like 2018, 2019, because I know they've been trying to get me to apply to Winnipeg. Yeah, but I never wanted to come to Winnipeg. I'm just being honest. Yeah. Like, Winnipeg was giving lame. I don't find that, but no, Winnipeg is really cool. But like, at that point in time, like, I didn't really know anybody in Winnipeg. I didn't know any musicians, really, or people that were recording in Winnipeg. So like, how am I going? I'll just chill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking got, got a whole ass. Speaking of Winnipeg. Yeah, speaking yeah. of Winnipeg, bro. <laughs> they got a I whole like, ass. Of I feel like we should keep some of these blueberries, actually. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like to keep it up. So, um, yeah, Winnipeg and everything. So I didn't know that many people who were really on their music shit in Winnipeg. So I was kind of discouraged. So I really wanted to be in like Ottawa, Toronto, all those mm. places and shit. But then my dad was like, oh, my sister is coming over here. And that he really wants me to move and everything. So I made the application and then, boom, I moved to Winnipeg. But what's crazy about my move to Winnipeg is like a couple months before I moved to Winnipeg, like, Lord D R I P like my basically my, my best friend, I don't know, my guy in Winnipeg, like bro. Yeah. yeah. So he was in Ottawa trying to re renew his passport and everything and then he just called me like, yo, they um they fucked up his reservation and then you know sometimes you need a credit card and then you don't yeah. know all of that so he couldn't get it. So I was like, Yo, can I come crash at your place? I was like, Bro, who love yeah. do you get so it was just him and the rest of everyone rapping, artists and shit. So really? we were just locked in for the few days he was in. That's and that right. was the first time I met him in real life. Yeah. Like, the other time was like, I, I, how I found him was like, I heard his song on SoundCloud. I was like, bro, this shit is too fire. And I hit him up like, bro, your songs are too hard. And I hit me up like, yo, let's do something. So we had like a song we were working on before we ever met. And then he had the whole thing and he called me. I was like, yo, just pull up. So like the couple days we were just indoors, locked in, smoking up. This is in no, this is Ottawa. Oh, before you? Yeah, before I moved. This is a couple months before I moved to Winnipeg. Right. Just recording, recording, and it was just vibes. And then he goes back. And then the next thing you know, I have to move to Winnipeg. And then I moved to Winnipeg. And then, then when I get to Winnipeg, I text him. I'm like, yo, I just moved to Winnipeg. Go, this is my address. It's like, you, you live 10 minutes away from me. Crazy. What? Like, bro, like a wall. That's not a, okay, at that point, it's not a coincidence. Like, you got that bro, many people just happening in your life? Do you get me? Yeah. Like, it was crazy as hell. So, like, I basically live there, bro. Like every day, I just go to his end. We record, yeah. plan. I feel like all the plans I'm executing now are the plans we plan together. Me, Dosh, Rob, yeah. Zino, Daniel. Like, bro, we just sit down, recording, talking about life and everything, planning years. Like, oh, we're gonna record this. We're gonna shoot the video like this. We're gonna do all of this. We're gonna. Like, bro, everything. And I feel like... You guys really manifested that. Really, we yeah. really did. And I feel like he put a lot of energy into that too. Because, like, he was... Oh, my God. Like, me, I'm very chill. Yeah. Like, very chill about everything. Like, I don't like to stress too much. But, but, like, he was always going double time. Going extra hard. Mm -hmm. Like, working jobs and then some. Me, I'm like, do I even want to work this one job I got right now? Like, it's too much stress. He was going extra hard on everything just to, like make motivation. it happen, motivation. So like, it was a big motivation for me. So like, I will not want to record, but she's like, get up, get up. You have to, what do you mean? Like, yeah. so we're recording, 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 recording. That's how I even made my first tape, Quilu. So like, he's on the song, Buddy Mad song too. Like that was just one of the few songs we had in catalog. It was like, it was just put someone on the tape type shit, yeah. yeah. So like, yeah man, he was like big energy and everything. But that's how I moved to Winnipeg. The same kind of synergy too. Just like, oh, I guess I have to be in Winnipeg now. And boom, I'm in Winnipeg Wait, now. You definitely made the most of it, it seems like. Oh, most definitely. So, most definitely. You I got a degree out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you plan on using it, or what do you think? Hopefully, in the future, yeah. yeah. I actually want to use my degree in the future. I actually want to go into psych research. Like, I want to research some weird shit. Like, yeah. But, like, that's, like, later, later, like... Some mentally deranged people or, like, like mental health type yeah, stuff. Yeah, mental health type shit, like, um, drugs. Yeah. To be honest, like... All of that shit, the brain, all of that shit. So like, I don't know. That's probably later because like right now I really just want to be on this music thing and like see how far we could take it. And then the side thing is for like when I'm older, when I'm trying to retire, and then that could be a thing that I could make happen. 
maybe I'll do a Masters at some point, who knows. Yeah. You think, uh, if you're gonna do that as like a career, do you think you'd go home or do you think you'd like stay here? I feel like I'll go India. India? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I feel like they have a crazy psych and psych adjacent culture. They do, yeah. Yeah, they, they're heavy on that. I feel like the research-wise, um, resources-wise, they're heavy on that. So I've, I've been one going there the whole time. My dad is like, just get your citizenship in Canada. My dad, like, but, 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 but like, I really, like, eventually, like when I'm older, for sure. Do you think that research that you've kind of done, like the learning, it's kind of like, because a lot of your writing is very introspective. It's very, you're deep, you're thinking real. deep in your thoughts and your that's relationships real. with people. You find that's like, that's real, yeah, yeah, that's, there's heavy influence in that, like, especially like, my newer records, like, because, mm -hmm. like, my older stuff was, like, I don't know, I was kind of, like, in between not, not being as expressive as I wanted to be, but, like, this newer stuff is still not everything, because, like, I'd be pacing myself too much about <laughs> everything, but, like, I feel like I'm a lot more expressive and, like, explicit about a couple things, and, like, yeah, there's heavy, there's definitely heavy influence of, like, psych, um Hindu philosophy from being honest really? like yeah. yeah Vedanta all those kind of philosophy in general so like yeah kind of esoteric kind of fly kind of like just a mix of everything yeah. that's a good way to describe your music yeah, that's the best way to describe my music for real like yeah. esoteric but kind of fly yeah. Yeah. Um, put that on a t-shirt yeah <laughs> but I will yeah I will so yeah. we'll talk about that new music too long I love the record. I think it's great. And the music video for it is also really appreciate it's just like visually. Um, I think it does a good job of just like, like I'm immediately like I see the girls. I see, just want to look. So yeah, more. I'm just like immediately yeah. focused in on focused in. Yeah, that's the point. Mm -hmm. just trying to because like we're big on visuals right now. You know, like, um, the kind of platforms people consume on and everything. Yeah. I don't know me. I'm a very inside kind of guy. I don't really like I'm shy. Yeah. Yeah. So like everyone like my friends management everyone's been like oh okay you, you need to be showing yourself out more and everything so i figured yeah i feel like that's something i want to do more just invest in music videos because like i like the way it brings the idea of the song to life so like right. even if you just hear the song i'm like yeah it's kind of cute when you see the video you're kind of like yeah i, I kind of fuck with this yeah you definitely like more. you illustrate you kind of illustrate with your lyrics exactly with the lyrics mm -hmm. uh, yeah the way I use my lyrics is very, very, also very, like, illustrative, not not descriptive, not like I'm telling a story, I'm just, like, painting a picture, yeah. and then the video could just play that out, and then it just, it's just a nice balance, I guess. For sure. Yeah, it's a nice balance of that. When I looked across your other, your other videos, I noticed a trend of, like, having, like, the female lead or a female adjacent kind of in there. Do you find that, um, is that something you're kind of thinking of doing directly, okay. or is that just, like... Just part of like the whole process. You think? It's like yes and no. It's like I don't do it intentionally. That's for sure. Like yeah. I want something I do directly, but I don't know. I feel like it kind of goes back. That I feel like it goes down to the way I write my music too. It was like I feel like I write my music very conversationally. Mm -hmm. Like me and her type. Shit. There's never her, but like you, know, it's a back and forth type shit. Yeah. And then I like that power struggle like it gives shiva shakti kind of vibe all the time like right um, <clears throat> that kind of philosophy and everything so like i guess it kind of plays into the videos too and the way i write my music and everything but i do like i like the, as the struggle the, the power the, struggle the back, the, the back and forth is very very appealing like visually sonically everything like it gets still you know so like i don't know i don't do it consciously yeah no, it just happened, and then I noticed it too. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this is kind of cool. I feel like I should tap into that some more. So maybe I'll be tapping into that some more. So you, like, you, as we've talked, you've kind of, like, talked about how, like, you and your friends back in Ottawa, you really, like, um, just made it kind of, like, a natural thing, like, the way, yeah, you, very the much way you make just music. So kind of the lifestyle type thing. Do you, do you find that, like, you are pulling from, like, your life when you are? Very much, yeah. very much so, like, Sometimes very unintentionally too, because like from, I did this thing from like 2020 to like 2022, I didn't want to write, so I didn't write. 
Like, I didn't write anything down. Yeah, you, did t you took a year break, right? Not necessarily a year break. I was still recording. Oh. I just wasn't writing. Oh, okay. So, like, if I want to record, I just go to the studio and say whatever is on my mind. Because, like, I picked it up from Jay-Z and Lil Wayne. Jay-Z was like, yeah, that's how I do it. I just... So, I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Yeah. Because cause I noticed, like, when I write, it's a lot more um, fabricated. Like, you could tell, I don't know, for me, it's like, you could tell it's made up. But, like, when I just come and I really like a bit and then I just start talking. Then, more from the heart. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If it's real, then it's real, that kind of thing. But then when you, when you make music like that, then... Sometimes it gets too honest. Right. Yeah, basically. Sometimes <laughs> it gets too honest. You literally say everything. You're not as, dropping names. As you feel it. I mean, sometimes you accidentally yeah. just what's funny. <laughs> not accident, but like, that's the thing that's crazy about music, yeah. Sometimes, like, that's the only way it could play out in your head. Like, the name, the context, yeah. the song, everything just, like, makes sense in that direction. It's like, you, you might as well not do the song if you're not gonna do the name too. So that's, <laughs> it'd be like that sometimes for real. Yeah. So like, yeah, you're not trying to go in a direction, but like the music is already gone in that direction already. So like, what are you gonna do? Exactly. Actually, yeah. If it's if it's coming to just emotionally, then that's good. Emo yeah, exactly. Cause like, I mean, like when I make music, I feel like I feel like the music does most of the work in the sense of like I like to think that the music is already there. Like you're just listening. I don't know, cause that's how. It, it works in my experience like i kind of just hear the song already so if i don't hear a song then there's no song for sure basically so like yeah so how did you how are you able to like because you do have a background in producing how are you able to like get that hook going with um lil prof yeah because because he really came on there and just like yeah, bro, delivers right dude, away bro me and prof have been top in since like i came to winnipeg like, so this is like the 20, 20, 21. Mm -hmm. all the people i found in this city that were good good like bro come my city a bit more they record so like i've been making beats for him i shared to be recording we've just been making a bunch of songs none of them like we, we hadn't discussed putting on anything yeah. just making music making music crazy songs crazy songs crazy songs so you got some on the ball too many okay so <laughs> this particular song too long yeah I play for a bunch of my guys, play for my niggas who play in the club a couple of times and then it sounds good, like a lot of positive response from people and everything. And then people are like, oh, drop this shit, drop this shit. And then I haven't dropped music since like a year, since like my last drop. And I'm like, song is mad, Sha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll just call people like, yo, let's just do this song, let's just do this song. Yeah. Because like, yeah, we just record, we just been recording a bunch of crazy, actually good <laughs> songs. Like, yeah. I feel like too long is it's even the best one. Oh, so you got more in the top then? Bro, like at least three, three, four that are better in my opinion. Okay. Too long was just the one that fit the moment. Yeah. Like, that was the best one for the moment. So we're like, okay, let's just do that real quick, real quick for the summer. Boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was it's a vibe. Summer Every, vibe. Yeah, it's a good summer vibe. Everyone kind of fucked with it for the summer and everything. Like, So it's doing pretty well. Like, I guess you expect, like, you ex kind of yeah, expected. Yeah, it's kind of doing okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I'm not making billions of it yet. <laughs> not doing well enough but like yeah if the city is rocking with it people outside are rocking with it yeah everyone's rocking with it it's cute so what's the new what's the new music kind of look like moving forward yeah i like that's a nice question so um big shout out to d at the end of the day because like i feel like a lot of the music i'm about to be putting out now is the music basically designed together because like we used to talk about everything with production samples just like what we wanted our sound to be like. Cause like, there's the generic kind of like Afrobeat pop sound. Yeah. And then there is this like niche middle. I feel like this Bonner Boy's new tape brought really focused on that side of the underground because it's really right. underground, underground. Like a bunch of niggas making music like this, but like a lot of people don't pay attention where it's like, it's Afrocentric hip hop. It's hip hop. Yeah. It's hip hop. But like, it's, it's... It has that, you're Nigerian. Yeah, you, you're Nigerian. You can hear all the African influence, influences and everything. But like, you could still spin that shit right after Kendrick, right after J. Cole, right after yeah. Griselda. I could shit. slide that into any set. Any set, like, why is R&B too? So it's like, yeah. So spend a lot of time, like, kind of designing that sound. And then he passed away. In like late 2021, I think it was no, Sorry about in that. late 2020. Yeah, I feel like that was a huge 
transition too for me that like changed everything because like my the dynamics of my life before that point was so different to after that point it's crazy mm -hmm. but like yeah um i just really focused on like sound design so that's when i really started producing my own stuff i usually outsource production because i like to work with a lot of people yep. but like for this tape i was like no one understands this sound like i do basically no one well it's your it's your baby album. exactly so like everything like sound selection writing everything was just i spent like a year a year or two recording like the album and the ep so like i recorded the album first okay and then the album was kind of heavy like very dense right. material like i feel like sonically and my approach and everything was just very dense i was like oh my god how am i going to transition from afro beats into this yeah. it's kind of different the mixture yeah so yeah. i was like okay let me make an ep so like the ep you now is like a softer version of like the album where it's still like hip-hop so like when people ask how it sounds i go back to like old whiskey like if you remember yeah. like Hala Your Boy production, Don Door production, yeah. Old Two Face, um, for instance, those kind of because those were hip hop productions, yeah. yeah, and the approach was very Fifty Cent too, Old Fifty, Old Fifty, and mm -hmm. everyone, Old Fifty Cent, Old Jay Z, yeah. very much that kind of production, but very fly, very fly. Doesn't have that extra. Doesn't have that extra. Um, disrespect i don't know that extra grimminess like it's still yeah. grimy it's still grimy but it's 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 still flying you it's could take it to another level like, you could take it to another level you could play you could play it on some pop shit and then you could listen to it introspectively too yeah. and then you could just play it in the car and shit so like it's a very i feel like there's a there's everything for everyone so there's that very grimy shit mm -hmm. and then there's that very bluesy r&b cool type yeah. shit and then there's like the nice in between and everything do you find that like yeah. in canada that is like reflected well i think so yeah because i feel like canada is heavy on fusion yes like food canadian food <laughs> heavy fusion like come on like yeah the people the Definitely. cultures heavy fusion so like of course the music is going to be fusion like i have a bunch of artists from like different walks of life like legit different walks of life Sure. on the album talking their own independent shit <laughs> like mm -hmm. their own perspective what they've been through and everything so i feel like that's the crazy thing about canada the sounds can't fuse together so seamlessly so like i go from you could go from like very violent drill if you should put it like that yeah and then just phase into that kind of opium kind of like i'm just chilling kind of like tweaking mm -hmm. to rb to Afro kind of pop, but then there's still that sense of integrity where it does not sound like it's all over the place. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the sound selection still kind of sounds the same. I feel like that's very Winnipeg. Grimy, mm -hmm. but like is international. It, Winnipeg's such like a diverse city, I feel exactly. like. Exactly. And especially like people, I feel like people that are from Winnipeg, the type of music they listen to. Like you see an artist like Drake, Drake, no, exactly. he, some people say he might be biting, but like, honestly, he has a really good way of identifying sounds. Uh, different sounds from different cultures. And I feel yeah. like if you live in Canada, I don't feel like you, you think Drake is biting. Cause like, there's no way you live in Canada and then you're not immersed. Yeah. Like, except you're lame. Like, <laughs> yeah, you go to the Caribbean parties, you go to the Nigerian parties, then you go to the, the Indian parties, you go to all of them and eat all the food and everything. Yeah. So. It's like at some point you start bopping the music just as hard. Yeah. Like it's I an listen, yeah, I literally listen to like Southeast Asian music just as much as I listen to Griselda. Mm -hmm. Like it's crazy. It's like wild. yeah, so like it's <laughs> a crazy night. Nice. It's, it's actually crazy, like yeah. crazy spread, like literally of music. And I feel like that's only possible because of the fusion in Canada here. So like, come on, like if you if you immerse yourself in Canada, then come on. Is, is there anybody else you think you want to work with? Oh, so many people, bro. Yeah. So many people I want to work with. Who, who, who's one guy that you, you think you could, you maybe want to get a verse on the album or something? Right now? Hmm. That's, that's a trick question. I have a bunch of people like I would love to pull on the album. But like, everybody's going to say Drake. But like, Drake is an easy, like, success type shit. Like, mm -hmm. Drake, of course. But like, 
if I really want to say, oh, I want to put someone on the album, it's definitely Fly God. Like, That'd be crazy. Fly like, God, West Side Gone, bro. Like, well, that, I know that's basically impossible, but like... Get in those DMs. They be looking. I might as well, like when the, when the when the tape is more ready and I can send it out and shit like that, I might as well. Like definitely Griselda, oh my god. If I could get, like, even if it's just a fly god. <laughs> like, bro, just get the drop on it. Yeah, fly god, that would be crazy, that would be crazy. Oh yeah, maybe Marcy, Rock Marcy. Yeah, like, he just dropped like, the tape with Alchemist, too. Bro, bro. It's good bro. stuff, man. On loop. On loop. Yeah. <laughs> On loop. All the time, bro. I rinse. Marcy, but that new tape is crazy. So it's a lot of gra- you listen to a lot of like Grammy stuff, right? Yes, now. I recently like a lot of Grammy, a lot of Grammy music right now. Like I feel like I really got into my Grammy back since like twenty twenty one. I haven't listened to like sweet music in a while. Like <laughs> yeah, just, what's going on in your life that like, you just I listen to yourself? <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't know. It's just Griselda, CEO Trail, like fucking what's his name? Um. This guy um, does the drill with the deep voice. Oh, wow. Uh, um, not Chef, on, not, not Chef on G. Tea. No, the UK guy. Oh. I don't know why I forget his game all the time. Not on no T. Um, fuck. I forget. My brain is not Wayne. No, not Tion Wayne. Fuck. I don't know why I forget. But shout him, out to dude, though. Shout <laughs> out to him, though. Like, I forget, <laughs> but like him. But yeah, just a lot of deep, grimy. Yeah. Just, I just want to hear niggas talking their shit. I just want to hear you talking about how good you are, how awesome you are, what you've done to get yourself to where you've got into. Like, I'm tired of heartbreak songs. I'm tired of love wrong songs. I'm tired yeah. of all the... That yeah. wave's kind of passed. Yeah, I feel so. I'm tired of hear like, I don't know, be on your shit. Yeah, kind of, yeah. So it sounds like you're going to be talking your shit on your project. Oh, most definitely. When, when should we be expecting that? Oh, shit, that's the long... That's the longest thing. So like, I was done recording the album 2021 to 2022. And then I recorded the EP 2022 and three. Yeah, shout out to you. <laughs> 2022 and three. So like the album has been ready for a while now, but like it's still in like the post-production stages. I'm still, you know, spicing it up a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. <clears throat> Or well, maybe 2025, maybe 2025. That's crazy because it was long recording 2020 to 2023, but now dropping, actually putting it out maybe 2025. Cause like, I wanna, I wanna do everything I can basically for it. Like yeah. the visual. It's to take the time. With take it. the time, the yeah. world building, everything, the aesthetics, everything. I want you guys to feel quick obeying, like, cause that's the, that's the tape and everything. It's very, I don't know, even the name quick obeying is giving, you know, Dracula, I don't know, the tone <laughs> of Dracula type shit. That's villain like, arc. Yeah. yeah. Villain arc, for real. Villain arc. So, like, going into that, tapping into that some more. But before that, I'm trying to drop the EP next year. That's 2024. Yeah, so I should be dropping the first single of the EP by the end of the year. Hopefully, shouldn't be doing soon. Hopefully, so. I don't want to say too much now, but expect it. Dunya, soon. Soon come. Yeah, the couple. Don't reveal too much. No, 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 not too much. But yeah, the EP. The Where EP should we be finding that stuff? Um, maybe. Plug your socials. Um, Quick Obain. I Quick Obain on everything on YouTube, on Snapchat, on Instagram, on TikTok, on everything. I Quick Obain. I Quick Obain. Yes, sir. On everything. So yeah. So the EP is gonna be out next year, 2024 for sure. But yeah, yeah. Just give me time to make everything pretty and everything. But yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Last question, where do you want to be in five years? Where do I want to be in five years? She, I want to be rich. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like everybody wants to be rich, just be honest, but like, based on like, if I'm being just totally honest, like, basically I just want to, I just want to, um, an art community, you know, like a community of like, real culture heads, like people who are actually about the culture, not just on some like side. Mm-hmm. Psychic type shit, like you know, we will go down to like buy the merch, come out for the shows, and not like not just for the parties and stuff, but like actual wanting to experience the art in that sense. For sure, like, yeah, I want to be doing a lot more gallery shows because I really like you did Jerry Fest, yeah, that was fun, that was really fun. 
So like I'm trying to curate a lot more shows for myself too and all of that. Just trying to create like a safe space for artists basically where you can just come and just show off your your skills and all that and just have it more appreciated and that. So like 